In 1998, Michael Owen became England's youngest player at a World Cup against Tunisia, and seven days later became England's youngest World Cup goalscorer in a loss to Romania. Even these achievements weren't the highlight of Michael Owen's tournament. That came 16 minutes into a knockout stage tie against Argentina in St Etienne. He picked the ball up on the halfway line and, akin to Maradona 12 years prior in Mexico, danced through the opposition defence and scored one of the goals of the tournament. England would be eliminated on penalties because obviously, and Owen would secure his second successive Premier League Golden Boot the summer after in an underperforming Liverpool side. Owen scored in four of his five international tournaments with England as part of a golden generation that, again, underachieved. The only tournament in which Owen didn't score ended in yet another injury, at the 2006 World Cup in a group stage match against Sweden after only a minute. Injury had curtailed the end of his Liverpool career and after spending largely much of his year at Real Madrid on the bench, Owen returned to England with Newcastle and played just 11 Premier League games in his first season thanks to, yes, another spate of injuries. With the major ACL injury in the World Cup coming at the age of 26, Owen was entering what was supposed to be the prime of his career. Instead, the forward would play just 129 more games at club level and scored just three more international goals. The only trophy that eluded Owen was the Champions League, and whilst he won the Premier League title with Manchester United in 2011, he was a bit part player, featuring just 11 times. He would leave Old Trafford the following year for Stoke City and play out a year which he has since stated he preferred not to play before retiring at the age of 33 in 2013. It is a career that burst into life at the age of 17 and was announced a year later on the world stage, but one that will be hampered by injury after injury. He remains the fifth highest goal scorer in English history behind Wayne Rooney, Sir Bobby Charlton, Gary Lineker and Jimmy Greaves. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if Michael Owen was injury free. Michael Owen saw the 1998-99 season in Liverpool's push for European football. Liverpool was severely underperforming in ninth place going into April with eight matches remaining. The young forward assisted Robbie Fowler in a 1-0 win at the death away at Leeds before continuing his hot streak in front of goal with a hat-trick against Villa, two against Leicester, the winner in a 3-2 win over Manchester United and two at Hillsborough. The latter victory confirmed Liverpool's place in the following season's UEFA Cup in fourth position, a point ahead of Leeds United. The 3-2 win over Manchester United effectively stopped them winning the league and therefore the treble. Whilst Owen and Liverpool had to watch United win a European trophy against Bayern Munich in the new Camp, Owen had dragged Liverpool kicking and screaming into a European tournament for the following season. The late flurry of goals saw Owen claim his second successive golden boot in the Premier League, scoring 26 miles ahead of the nearest competition of Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank and Dwight York. With European football back at Anfield, Liverpool made the most of it and eliminated Partizan Belgrade and both Lokomotiv and Spartak of Moscow in long trips in the earlier rounds. Roma were dispatched at the turn of the year, which left three teams in their way of a third UEFA Cup title after two triumphs in the 70s. The first of these teams were Leeds, who had been smarted by Liverpool and had to endure an Intertoto Cup campaign to get to the quarter-final stage. Over the glory days of the UEFA Intertoto Cup, with Owen suspended, Liverpool lined up defensively in the first leg at Elland Road, a scrappy 0-0 affair played out. Nothing could separate them in the league either as they both sat four points behind Manchester United with nine matches remaining. Michael Owen returned to Liverpool's squad for Leeds' arrival in the second leg. The game exploded into life, blown apart by Mark Vanuka three minutes in. Two Michael Owen goals in the second half claimed his eighth and ninth goals of the tournament to ensure Liverpool's progress into the final four. Galatasaray would be bested in the semi-finals which left both Liverpool and Arsenal descending on Copenhagen for the final in May, but first, they were locked in a battle with Leeds to qualify for the Champions League alongside Manchester United. Owen scored five goals in the final five games, the last of which came in a 1-0 win at Valley Parade that had no bearing on Liverpool's season, they had already qualified for the Champions League, but on Bradford City season, who they had just beaten and subsequently relegated from the Premier League. Arsenal would follow Liverpool into the Champions League, with the two on a collision course in the UEFA Cup final. A final that was a sheer stalemate for the 112 minutes it was played. That was until Michael Owen leapt onto a cross to nod in on the back post four yards out. The cruel golden goal that killed off Arsenal's hopes of a UEFA Cup, but in turn gifted Liverpool their third. But ten months later, Liverpool were back in the UEFA Cup after finishing third in a Champions League group that contained Lazio and Shakhtar Donetsk. 
They had just overcome Porto in the UEFA Cup quarterfinal 2 0 aggregate and only two weeks prior clinched the League Cup thanks to a four goal haul from Michael Owen in a 5 1 win over Birmingham City. They had an FA Cup semi final lined up against Wickham and a five point gap to Manchester United that needed to be closed in the league. Owen wouldn't even get the chance to achieve these goals. He was snapped up by Liverpool's upcoming UEFA Cup opponents, Barcelona, for a whopping £40 million figure. Owen would be cup tied for that semi final, but with the striker out of the equation and no replacement lined up, Liverpool lacked in firepower, and after two goalless games, the tie went to a penalty shootout which Barcelona won. Back in Spain, however, Owen was making a name for himself with 12 league goals in Barcelona's final 10 games, including a hat trick against Oviedo. Barcelona's late surge from 4th place left them on 80 points along with Real Madrid at the top. Barcelona had an inferior goal difference, but their superior head to head record over Real Madrid prior to Owen's arrival saw the La Liga title swim back to the new camp. The three pronged attack of Patrick Cliver, Rivaldo, and Michael Owen proved irresistible. A UEFA Cup would cap off the season, Clivert scoring a hat trick in a 5 2 win over Alaves. For the 2001 2 season, Louis van Gaal rejoined Barcelona in his second stint as manager. Owen's first full season at Barcelona ended with the Pachichi Trophy, thanks to 33 league goals in 37 games, 12 ahead of Diego Tristan of Deportivo. Alongside this was a 6 point win over Valencia in La Liga and a Champions League triumph in Glasgow, in which Owen scored one in a 3 1 victory over Bayer Leverkusen. Owen had scored five knockout stage goals, including two in the quarterfinals against Liverpool. Owen retired in 2014 and saw out his career at the Nou Camp amongst two of the best generations at Barcelona under Louis van Gaal's management. The likes of Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Patrick Cliver and Carlos Puyol were replaced with Lionel Messi, Andres Iniesta, Xavi and Gerard Piquet, but the success never let up. What followed was a European success perhaps only paralleled by the 1950s Real Madrid side. A third European Cup came in 2003 and a third on British shores, with a 1-0 win over Juventus at Old Trafford. Owen netted two goals in the following season's final, a 4-1 humbling of Porto and Gelsenkirchen. Of the only teams that could stop Barcelona in Europe under Van Gaal, only Liverpool could beat them in a final, and that was in 2005, coming from two behind to win 3-2 in Istanbul. Owen would score in four further finals in wins over Arsenal, AC Milan in two separate finals against Manchester United. Owen brought his Champions League tally to 8 and Barcelona's to 9 in 2012 in Munich against Bayern. They remain the Champions League's most successful club, one ahead of Real Madrid. And on the international stage, well Owen shared success with his English teammates. They would go all the way in Portugal in 2004. Owen was edged out of the golden boot by his teammate Wayne Rooney, but Owen would score the all-important opener against Greece in the final in a 2-1 win in Lisbon. England lost in the 2006 final thanks to Marco Materazzi and Italy, but made successive semi-finals at the subsequent Euro 2008 and 2010 World Cup. Owen would retire from England following a semi-final defeat at the 2010 World Cup to the Netherlands. He would finish as England's top scorer on 51 goals. Now let's limp our way to the winners and losers. Liverpool losers, because they would have a dip after Owen left and wouldn't be able to compete complete the cup treble of 2001, losing to Arsenal in the cup final and Barcelona in the UEFA Cup semis. They would return to prominence however with the Champions League win in 2005. England winners. Because the years of hurt from 1966 officially ended in 2004 in Portugal. Michael Owen, obviously a winner, because the man who wouldn't otherwise have won a Champions League trophy did. Manchester United, losers they wouldn't claim that famous treble of 1999. Barcelona, huge winners, because they would win a massive eight Champions League titles in 10 years, surpassing Real Madrid's tally. This video was made as part of the What If Football launch day. Each week, starting from Monday morning, a new scenario will be published right here on YouTube.